In this tutorial, we're going to cover a lot of vector drawing and editing tools. I'm going to show you how to create the layout for the sign that you can see on the screen here. So we're going to start by sketching some simple shapes, node editing those shapes in order to manipulate them. Then we're going to offset them to create a border. We're going to also create some construction data from those vectors in order to help us lay out the text and the stars that you can see. I'm going to show you things like the distortion tool, text along a curve, pasting vectors along a curve, and finally we're going to import an image and fit vectors to that to create our coffee mug graphic. Let's go ahead now and start a new copy of the software to begin. So let's come over and uh, set up our job. We'll click on the icon to create a new file. In here we're going to specify a job size um, for this particular layout of 19 inches width, 9 inches high, uh, material uh, Z0 is going to be on the top of the block. I'm going to make this sign a thickness of 0 0.75, 3 quarters of an inch. And for our design layout I'm going to work with the XY datum position in the middle of the part here. So X0, Y0 is going to be in the centre, set up in inches. Let's hit OK. I'm going to start by drawing a couple of simple shapes. First, I'm going to come over and under Create Vectors, I'm going to click on the icon to draw circle. And we're going to set centre position, X0, Y0. I'm going to choose the diameter, and I'm going to set a diameter value of 8 and hit Create. So that's made an 8 inch wide circle in the middle of our job at X0, Y0. And hit Close now. Next, I'm going to click on the icon to draw a rectangle. For the rectangle, I'm also going to use an anchor point in the center at X0 and Y0. Corner type is going to be square, so I'm just going to make standard rectangle. And the width of this is going to be 18 in X and 4 in Y. So 18 wide, 4 inches high. Again, let's hit Create. You should see that rectangle appear there. So 18 wide, 4 high in the middle of the job. We can hit close. Next I'd like to make a couple of edits to our rectangle that we just made. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go into node editing mode that allows me to see the constituent pieces of a vector. So with that selected I can come over and click on this icon here to go into node editing or I could hit N on the keyboard as a shortcut. When we click on that we're going to see the individual nodes which are going to be at the corners and the spans which are the lines that join up between the nodes. As well as seeing those I can see a green node here that shows me where the start point of the vector is and I've also got what we call virtual midpoints which are these points in the middle of the span here and if I was to click and drag on one of those then it would add a new point, a new node in there and uh, allow us to edit the shape. Here what I want to do is take advantage of those virtual midpoints in order to import a point exactly halfway along and then to edit its position. So to do that I'm going to drag a small box around the virtual midpoint so it's selected. I'm going to right mouse click on it and I'm going to choose the option to insert a point. Then I'm going to right mouse click over the node and go down to properties. Within the properties here, I'm going to change its current location. So currently it's at X0, Y2. I'm going to change the Y value to be 1.5, so effectively moving the node down half an inch when we hit apply. I'm going to come and do the uh, opposite to the one at the bottom here. I'm going to drag a box around it, right mouse click, insert a point, right mouse click over the node, properties, and put in a value, this time it will be negative 1.5 rather than negative 2 to move that up half an inch, move its location up half an inch. So there we've introduced a bit of a sort of bow tie shape by editing or by inputting nodes and editing the position of those nodes. To exit node editing mode we can hit escape on the keyboard or we can click on the arrow here. Now let's take the rectangle we just created and we're going to offset it inwards and then sketch some data and trim it to create some construction vectors that we'll use later in our layout. Click on offset selected vectors icon here. I'm going to put in um, to offset this inwards and the distance I'm going to put in is 0 0.8 inches. I'm going to go ahead and hit offset and close that. 
and then I'm going to come up and click on the icon to draw polyline and I'm going to use the software's ability to snap in this case to an intersection so you can see as I move over the point where that circle and the line cross it shows me an icon and that icon indicates that it'll snap to the intersection of those two points so I'm going to click at the top then come down and click at the bottom there I'm going to hit the space bar on the keyboard which will accept and complete that uh, first line and then I can click on the intersection here click on the intersection here and I can either hit the close button or I can just hit the right mouse key uh, in order to accept that shape Next, what I'm going to do is come over and use the trim vectors, the scissors icon here, and I'm just going to clip away these two pieces in the middle. So I just hover over and click in order to trim that away. I'm going to hit close, and then I'm going to select the two lines we just created, holding the shift key, and hit delete on the keyboard to delete them. So I just created those lines temporarily so I could use them um, as basically construction geometry in order to snip my lines back to and now I've deleted them because we don't need them anymore. Next I'm going to take this vector here, the circle, and I'm going to hit offset selected vectors. This time I want to offset this inwards by a distance of 1.1. I'm going to hit offset, close. I'm going to come back to the trim vectors tool, the scissors, and this time I'd like to trim away these bits here, so click hover over it so the scissors open and then click and close. As you're creating designs within the software sometimes it can be advantageous to use the layers to help you keep that data organized. In this case I've just created some vectors that are essentially just going to be construction vectors as we lay out the rest of our part. That's this one here, this one, this one and this one and I've just selected those by holding the shift key down and clicking on each. So rather than um, keep those on the same layer as this other data it could be beneficial for me to move that onto a layer we'll call that layer construction and then we can switch that on and off as we need it. So I'm going to right mouse click I'm going to choose the option to move to layer I'm going to say new layer and we'll call this layer construction. I'm going to currently make that layer invisible and I'm going to make it inactive so I'm, neither of these boxes are going to be checked. When I hit OK I'll see those vectors disappear and that's because they've gone onto a layer which is not visible. If we wanted to we could click on the down arrow here and we can see the construction layer in the list and I can switch the visibility of that on and off using the light bulb there. At the moment we'll leave it off I'm going to make sure layer 1 is still my selected layer um, so that that's currently active. Next I'm going to take my two vectors that are on that layer and I'm going to hold the shift key down, select those, come over and I'm going to weld them together. There are various options in the software for joining vectors like this. In this case we're going to weld them and keep the outline. We can also subtract and also create the union of those two vectors. So in this case we'll click on the icon to weld selected vectors and that's just going to get rid of the pieces inside and effectively leave me with the silhouette of the two vectors that I had selected in this case. So at this point it would probably make sense for me to uh, give this layer a more sensible name. So we can click on the down arrow for the list, click on the name layer 1 and I'm going to call that outline vector, hit close. And I'm going to take that vector and actually make a couple of offsets and then we'll switch that particular layer off and uh, work on the text. So with that vector selected I'm going to hit the offset selected vectors command. I'm going to go inwards. I'm going to offset this by a distance of 0.2. Make sure create sharp corners is checked and make sure select new is checked. That means that when we hit offset that the newly offset vector will be selected. That means that I could put in another value now to offset that again if I want. So here I'm going to put in a distance of 0.1 so that I'll take the newly offset vector and offset that again by that distance we've just entered. I'm going to hit close on the offset form there. At this point I've got my outline so I'm going to come up to the layer list and I'm going to switch on the construction layer 
and I'm going to switch off the outline vector layer. So just making that invisible by clicking on the light bulb, construction layer is visible. You'll see when I make the outline vector layer invisible that the name turns red. That's because that is the active layer. When I switch off the visibility of the active layer, the software will show me that in red, and that's because typically you would like to select a layer to be active that is currently visible. So I'm going to select the construction layer, and now whatever new data we create would be, would be created on the construction layer. However, I don't actually want to create my data on that layer. I would like to use the information on that layer to help me, but I'd like to create a new layer. So I'm going to click on the button to add new layer, and I'm going to add a layer called text and go ahead and hit close. So now I've added that, it's bold which shows me that that is the active layer, however I've still got the data for the construction layer switched on. But if we hit close now anything new I create will be created on the active layer which it shows me up here is the one called text. That'll be helpful to me because after I'm finished creating it I can switch off the data in the construction layer very easily. Next thing I'd like to do is draw a star and then I'm going to make five copies of it flowing along this curve we've got at the top here. So we'll come over to the draw star tool under create vectors. You can see in here I've lots of different ways to specify my star. Um, we could just click and then drag in order to draw the star or we can type in specific values if we want. For instance I could put in center position 0, 0, outer radius 0.5 and in this case I'm going to use a special value for the percentage here which will give me a nice straight edged um, five pointed star. So if I put in 38.2% and hit apply we can see that's created what we'd sort of consider to be a typical five pointed star with a nice straight edge across the horizontal there. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit close. Let's click on zoom to fit and now what we want to do is take our star we're going to choose this vector here to make copies along. So with the star selected, I'm going to hold shift down. I'm going to click on this arc. And I'm going to come down to a command called copy object along vectors. Tells me here that I need to select the object followed by the vector that I want to copy it along. So we've already done that. We had the star selected. Then we selected the curve second. Here I'm going to tell the software I want five copies of that. I want to align the objects to the curve. I don't want to create copies on a new layer, I want to keep them on the layer that I'm currently on and I'm going to hit copy. Now we can see that looks okay but my stars are upside down and that's to do with the direction of the curve that we're pasting them onto there. So if you see that all you need to do is check the box here that says reverse direction, hit the copy button again and you'll get a new result basically where the object is in the um, will turn from being whichever direction it was in to being uh, upside down again. In this case that actually is correct and again that's all to do with the direction of that curve. So I'm happy with that. I can hit close. I'm actually going to delete this star in the center here. We don't need that. Next we'll create some text. Come over, click on the icon to draw text. I'm going to type in five and then hit enter, so I'm on a new line, star, hit enter, and then coffee, all on a new line there. I'm going to choose from the font list, Times New Roman, I'm going to make it bold, I'm going to put in a text height of 0 0.8, and hit apply in order to create my text. Now I'm going to hit close, and then with that text selected, I'm going to right mouse click in the window here and say break text block into lines. And that will divide it up. So instead of one block of text, I've got a separate block for each line that we created there. And I'm just going to click on the words, click on them again to go into transform mode, hover over the center, click and drag. Coffee here will click, click again to go into transform. I'm just going to drag that down out the way here. To exit out of transform mode here, you can just click into the uh, white space or you can hit escape on the keyboard. Next, I'm going to take the word coffee here and fit that along this curve. So I'm going to click on this, shift and select my curve. I'm going to come up to wrap text along a curve. And in this case, we're going to 
ask the software to wrap it on the curve. So like the stars we've got here, the line will kind of bisect the lettering there. I'm going to uh, put the text alignment in the middle, align to curve, hit apply. The moment it's going the wrong way and that again is to do with the direction of the curve that we created. To correct that when we're using the text on a curve function we can just check this box here that says text on other side and now you can see that that's oriented correctly. Next you can see these letters are quite big um, for the size of the curve that we've got there so we're getting a little bit of overlap so I think I just want to shrink things down a little bit I can say scale text fit curve we can shrink that down and then I can increase the text spacing here in order to generate a bit more space between them so we can just adjust those values until um, we're happy with the way that looks even after we've um, adjusted the values within the form here though we can also close out of this come up to the edit text spacing and curve function if I click on this and select the text now I can go in between the letters here and I can either click to make them move closer together or if I want to um, move them further apart I can hold the shift key down in order to force the spacing out a little so I can adjust that spacing there till we're happy with the way that looks then we're going to um, go ahead and click on selection mode to exit the edit text spacing function for the next part of our design I want to take the word 5 and the word star and just distort it to follow the slope of these lines here. To do that I'm going to need to take these lines I'm going to go into node editing, hit N on the keyboard I'm going to come over the span on the left in this case, right mouse click and say that I want to delete span and you'll see I can also use the D key on the T keyboard to do that. I'm just going to click here to delete that over here I'm going to select the shape this time I'm going to hover over the span there and hit D to achieve the same thing. Now I'm going to distort along these lines here and what I need to do is make sure the lines are both flowing in the same direction. The green node shows me the start point of the line so in this case it shows me it's flowing from the left to the right I'm still in node editing mode which is why I can see that if I click on this one I can see it's flowing from the right to the left so what I want to do is right mouse click on this end and say make start point or P on the keyboard would be the shortcut for that over on this side if I select the top one I can see that's going uh, from right to left bottom one is going left to right I do want them to flow left to right so again I'm going to click on the top one I'm going to hover over the node and this time instead of using the right key on the uh, mouse I'm going to hit P on the keyboard in order to change that so that's the same as going right mouse click make start point so now these vectors are both flowing in the same direction we can exit node editing mode so I can come over and click on the selection mode arrow here or I could just hit escape on the keyboard so now we've sorted out our vectors we can use the distort command I'm going to come over and click on the icon here, Distort Selected Objects. There's three different ways we can distort something with a bounding box where we just dynamically distort it above a single line or between two lines. In this case, I'm going to select this option between two curves here. Software expects me to select in order the object that I'd like to distort, then holding Shift the bottom curve and still holding Shift the top curve in that order. So Object, Bottom Curve, Top Curve, when I hit apply you'll see it's going to distort that object between those two curves that we selected one thing to know if I zoom in here is you can see it uses the extents of the object so in this case it's just every all the letters across the top here are in line but the V uh, is a little bit longer than the others but it's still used that to distort that along the line there so in some cases you may want to go in and um, make additional distortion we could do this by clicking on the transform object um, option here and then just dragging this bottom one and just stretching it down slightly so we can eyeball the bottom of the F, I and the E to be on the line and the V will just stick slightly through now which is fine visually that should be correct so we can hit close I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to zoom to fit I'm going to come over here, I'm going to select my object, shift and select the bottom curve, shift and select the top curve, click on the distort 
icon, go ahead and choose the between two curves option, hit apply. Again, if we just zoom in on that side there, I'm just doing that with rolling the mouse wheel. You can see we may want to stretch this a little bit again, the S and the A uh, sit a little differently. So I'm going to click on transform objects, I'm going to stretch the top bit, so the top of the T and the R line up with the line and then we'll stretch the bottom one and just eyeball the T, A and R to sit along the line there and the S to go slightly through. Again, when I'm happy with that, I can hit close on there, hit F in order to zoom to fit. Now it's important to note those vectors that we just distorted, the 5 and the star, are actually still in a state of distortion. We can see that by the fact that when we click on them here, it selects them all as a single object, rather than as individual vectors or as text. If I click on the Distort Selected Objects button, I still have the ability to go in and use the functions to continue to distort them. At, w at whatever point I am happy with the distortion and know that I don't need to do any more with it, I should come in here and click on the button to bake distortion, and what that will do is fix the distortion and convert these back to being regular vectors in case I want to do normal editing with them again. So again, it'll stay and understand these are still being objects that are, have the potential to be distorted until I hit bake. Now it's just made that into standard text. Same with these, I can select these, click on the bake distortion button, hit close, and now when I select them, they're just individual text objects. I could go into node editing and I could manually manipulate those again. So I'm happy with the uh, text we've created there and the stars that we copied. So now what we can do is go into our layer manager here and I can uncheck the construction layer. If you remember, all the lines that we created were on that layer. So that's just made it very easy now for me to um, undraw those that I no longer need. If we click on the outline vector layer, we can have a look at our overall layout. I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking. What I'd like to do to finish off our design is import an image that I've sketched and fit some vectors to it to make um, something, a, a little kind of graphic that will go in the middle of the sign. So for now I'm just going to undraw all my layers here. I'm going to hit add a new layer and we'll call this um, center graphic and hit close. That's now my active layer. And I'm going to come up and click on the icon here to import a bitmap for tracing. From within the project folder, I'm going to select this little sketch that I made on a post-it note called Coffee Mug JPEG. So you need to go into the project folder for this project, select the object, hit open, and there you can see that's just imported that. And that was just a very simple, quick sketch I've made on a post-it note that I've then just used a regular flatbed scanner to scan and uh, convert to a JPEG. So it's worth noting here that when we import an image, it automatically creates a new layer and places that image on it. If I click on the down arrow for my layers list, we can see this layer here, bitmap layer that wasn't there before. That's been created. The image has been put on that layer. And in the same way um, that I can with any of the regular layers, I can switch that on and off to um, display or undisplay the objects on it. Here, because we have our center graphic layer and that's currently active, any vectors that I create will be on this center graphic layer and that's good. Generally, I want to avoid creating anything other than the image on the bitmap layer. So I'm going to leave those both switched on though as they are. I'm going to hit close. Make sure in here we can see center graphic is our currently selected layer and then we're going to come down and click on the icon to trace this bitmap or to fit vectors to the uh, blocks of color within it. The trace bitmap function gives us a variety of choices we can make to help the software do the best job possible when fitting the vectors to the outside of the, of the colors in the bitmap. It's important to understand though that it's a very imperfect process and that really stems from the fact that images are made up of pixels and pixels generally don't have very clean edges. We can see in here there's quite a lot of noise um, even within something simple like this. 
So really, with the trace bitmap tool, you're just looking to try and do the best um, you can, get the best result you can, and then really you're going to expect to probably do some manual editing to the vectors afterwards, and we will go through that process here. Let me just hit F on the keyboard to fit this window back in again here so we're not zoomed. Some of the things we can choose in the trace bitmap, if I've got an image with multiple colours, I might want to switch the colour option on. Then what we're able to do is choose different colours within the image to fit the vectors to. In this case, that's not really practical because essentially I've got a black and white drawing. So I'm just going to click on the black and white option. We could increase or decrease the threshold or the contrast here. I'm just going to leave it set to 50. For corner fitting, we can say we want it to be tight, which means it's going to try and find corners, or in this case, I don't really have many corners, so I'm going to make it quite loose. Noise filter determines how um, many small areas are going to be filtered out or not. If we make this quite small and I hit the preview button, we can see that we pick up some little bits here and here and here. If we push the noise filter up the other way and hit preview, we can see those disappear. So again, you might want to play around uh, moving these sliders here, hitting the preview button until you've got a set of vectors that look as good as you can get from the data that you've loaded. One last thing before we take this data here is you can also fade the bitmap um, and make that more or less visible. But that is purely a visualization thing and will not have any effect on the quality of the vectors you get. Once we are happy, we hit apply and close. Here we can see the bitmap's been deselected. Here we've got the set of vectors that we've created over it. If we wanted to now, if we didn't need that bitmap anymore, we can click on the down arrow for our layers list and we can just click on the light bulb to undraw the bitmap layer. Remember these vectors were created on my active layer which was this center graphic layer and so we'll continue um, with that as our active layer and make some edits to them now and just clean them up a little. Now depending on the data there are different approaches you can take to the edit. In this case I'm just looking to get a nice smooth usable graphic from this image that we've imported. So what I'll probably do is take the risk of losing some of the integrity of the data by smoothing the vectors within it. Smoothing can be done by using the um, fit curves to vectors command and by just using quite a loose tolerance. So I would just select all these vectors in here, come over, click on the icon to fit curves to selected vectors. I can choose whether I want to fit arcs or bezier curves or straight lines. In this case I want bezier curves because I want these to be uh, nice and easy for me to edit. And then I'm just going to type in a tolerance and in this case let's go with a tolerance of 0 0.03 and I'm going to choose the option to replace selected vectors. When I hit preview, we can see how that has simplified the data, showing me here the node points within the data. And that looks good to me because as few node points as possible is going to make this easier for me to edit. So if I'm happy with that, I can hit OK um, in order to accept those vectors. I could also have hit cancel in order to exit without having accepted those changes. Now if I just click here, we can see that that has got smoother, but I still probably want to do a little bit of work just to tidy up some of the discontinuities that we've introduced in the process. And we're going to do that by going into the node editing mode and just manually cleaning up um, the vectors and the smoothness of the nodes. So first I'm going to go with the rim of the cup here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit N for node editing. I'm just going to zoom in and I can see it's not too bad. We just have an area here where we've got an extra node. can hover over that node there, right mouse click, go to delete point. And then what I want to do is probably just drag this carefully out so that I make sure that's smoothly flowing through there. And in some cases you may want to zoom out a bit and see what's happening. And it may actually be that it would be more beneficial for me to delete that point as well and then just to edit this the smoothness of flow of this particular node here. So again, when I, if I want to take a look at that without the nodes there, I can hit escape on the keyboard to exit node editing and zoom out a little. I'm happy with the way that looks. I'm going to come down the bottom here and just tidy up this. Click on it, hit N for node editing. I'm going to delete that point by hitting D on the keyboard. And then I can just adjust this 
um, as much or as little as I want. Hit F to fit that. Hit Escape to exit the node editing. And if I'm happy with the way that looks, then we can go ahead and size and position that against the other vectors in the part. Now obviously with the node editing I could continue to smooth and clean this up and insert nodes and edit nodes, delete nodes and move them around as much as I want um, and make it as accurate and as clean as I wanted these vectors to be. In this case because I'm just looking for this kind of representative graphic I don't really feel the need to do very much to it. Before we switch on our other vectors, it's going to be easier for me to um, scale and edit this if I can link all these vectors together. So I'm going to do that by dragging a box around them and then I'm going to group them together. I could use the shortcut key which is G on the keyboard or we can come across to the icon to group selected objects. All that's going to do is, is um, temporarily keep them within that group so that if I scale or rotate or move them, they're all going to... Um, stay relative to each other. It also makes it easier to select because when they're not selected I can just click on any one thing within that group in order to pick it up. So let's now switch on our other um, layers where we have data. I'm going to come to the drop down list for the layers. I'm going to switch uh, the outline vector on so that's visible. I'm going to switch the text layer on so that's visible. I'm going to hit close now we can select the group that we just created. You can see um, by grouping it how much easier it is to select that without having to worry about picking up any of the objects it's overlapping with. If I click on it again, I'm going to go into transform mode where I see these additional handles appear. What these handles will let me do is do things like scale this. If I hold the shift key down, I can scale it so that it stays in the middle there so that it scales around the center of the part so I'm just going to scale that down a bit and I click on the middle handle and just move that down a touch there and finally I'm just going to click on this dark blue handle in the corner and just click and rotate that around a little bit to straighten it up. Once I'm happy with that I can click on the arrow here to exit the transform mode and at this point the layout for our sign is pretty well complete. So let's go ahead and save the file in our project folder. Go up to File, Save As, and we'll give the file the name 5starcoffeevector.crv. Hit Save, and you could go ahead and uh, open that file if you wanted to take a look at it. In the companion tutorial to this, we're going to take the data and generate toolpaths on it to show you how you could machine this particular sign. Let's just take a moment to summarise some of the things we've looked at here though before we conclude. You've seen an example that used many different vector creation and editing techniques. As we went along we used the layers to help us manage and keep our vectors organised. You've seen lots of different uses of tools for things like the offsetting, going in and out of node editing and transform mode. You've seen specialist tools such as fitting um, text along a curve and fitting vectors along a curve. You've seen how to use the distortion in order to edit vectors to fit within pairs of lines. Ultimately, we ended up importing an image that we'd scanned and show you how you can fit vectors to that and then finally edit those and that finished off our particular layout. That concludes this tutorial.